God has come to save you, my dear friends. Rescue you from all the bondages. So he has designed a plan for you. After a punishment, there, after the rain, there, is, there will be sunshine soon. That's exactly what the first reading speaks about. I shall gather them from all around and bring them back to their land. I shall make them into one people in the mountains of Israel. And one, one king is to be king of them all. They will no longer form two nations nor be two separate kingdoms, nor will they defile themselves again with the ideal, idols, their detestable practices and their sins. I shall free them from the guilt of their treachery. I shall cleanse them and they will be for me a people. I shall be God for them, one shepherd for all. So this is exactly, exactly what God has done for us. But my dear friends, remember, all what God has done will be in vain in your life. If you do not, do not open the door for him. If you are not ready, so he will be the dividing factor. He will be the contradicting factor. Because in the, first, in the gospel we find, some people accepted, even after raising, giving life to Lazarus. So he raised the dead. So after witnessing such a marvelous miracle, such a strong miracle, some believed and some did not. So it's, it's very, it's exactly important, it's profoundly important whether you believe or not. So many of the Jews had come with Mary believing in Jesus when they saw what he did. But some went to Pharisees and told them that Jesus had, what Jesus had done. So the chief priests and the Pharisees called together the council. They said, what are we to do? For this man keeps on performing many miracles, signs. If we let him go on like this, all the people will believe in him. And as a result of this, the Romans will come and destroy our holy place and our nation. So they are so stuck with the temple. They are so stuck with the holy place, not with their life. They are defiled. They are polluted inside. The Lord is saying, no, you are no longer, there won't be a day, there will be a day where you no longer worship in that mountain and this temple. You will worship in truth and spirit, in your heart. So if you, if you get stuck with the tradition, stuck with liturgy, stuck with all the external things without realizing your inside, you will be done, my dear friends. You are completely done. So we are finishing 40 days. So you have done your fasting properly, isn't it? Sacrifices, mortification, praying, okay, for the retreat, everything. But in fact, if that thing has not pricked your heart, there's no change happening in your heart. You are in a dire strait. You have to be aware of it. Because my dear friends, you can't, you know, see the high priest, the one of them, Kaipas, who had a high priest in that year spoke up. You know, nothing at all. It is better to have one man die for the people than to let the whole nation be destroyed. This is a prophecy. Kepas never knew it. But there is his Lord, Lord's prophecy. So he's planning to kill Jesus. So in the very words of killing Jesus, God prophesying what he's going to do. So how much God's revelation can be hidden in your life? He says, if you don't, Jesus, people ask Jesus, don't allow people to shout like this. When he was entering Jerusalem, and he said, even stones would be shouting, if not the people. So even stones can do what people would do. 
in Balan's case, in history, in Old Testament, a donkey spoke. So you can be completely contradicting to God's plan, yet you can prophesy. You can do things. You can do things. God can use even a donkey like us without a proper connection. So Caiaphas was completely ignorant. He was trying to kill Jesus. Then the word says, see, in saying this, Caiaphas, Caiaphas did not speak for himself, but being high priest that year, he foretold like a prophet that Jesus would die for the nation and not for the nation only, but also would die in order to gather into the scattered, scattered children of God. So from that day on, they were determined to kill him. So God's beautiful plan is hidden in their, from their eyes. They were completely blinded with, with terrible stubbornness. They are happy with what they are doing. They were planning with, with their own selfish motives. They are, they are stuck with their petty, petty, narrow ideas. They lost the salvation. See, it can happen in you. Jesus had to. Because of this, Jesus no longer moved about freely among the Jews. He withdrew instead to the country near the wilderness and stayed with his disciples in the town called Ephraim. So Jesus can be hidden, hiding from your life. He's not moving in freely in your plan. He's in Ephraim, in wilderness. If you have not gone to the wilderness, if, if you are still stuck in the town, you're, you're, you're in a terrible state, terrible stage. It's a high time. At least these few days, have a U-turn. Go to the wilderness. Find Jesus there. Say sorry. Be ready to leave whatever he wants you to leave. Simply do that. He loves you so much. And he wants you doing that. Think about it. Probe into your hearts and see. And say sorry to Jesus, my dear friends. Amen. May God bless you.